Welcome to the inaugural episode of the Ward 5 Report. I'm Jeffrey Thompson, the newly elected Ward 5 City Councilor. I envision this program to be one part of my overall communication strategy in which I inform the residents of Ward 5 of all of the important developments in our community. Other parts of this strategy are my city council email, which is jthompson at cobma.us. My city council phone number, which is 508-897-6885. And my Ward 5 city councilor Facebook page. Now, on February 27th, I had the privilege of hosting my very first ward meeting. It was well attended, and some of the invited speakers were the mayor, Robert Sullivan, our city planner, Rob May, the school superintendent, Michael Thomas, and our police chief, Emmanuel Gomes. Now, I had the opportunity to share the good news of all of the downtown development currently happening and those developments that are in the pipeline. I also were able, was able to discuss the efforts of the Brockton Police Department and our district attorney's office and how they are protecting our neighborhoods. And additionally, I was able to speak about the projected increase in our school district's budget, which will have a positive effect on the education of our children. It is my promise to continue to inform all of the residents of Ward 5 of the important developments happening on the east side. Over the past six weeks, there has been no more important development in the city of Brockton than the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. This pandemic has affected every aspect of our lives, physically, financially, and emotionally. As of this program, our city has 2,532 positive COVID-19 cases, and our city has lost 158 of her residents to this disease. I offer my condolences to the family members of those who have perished from this disease. And a prayer of strength to all Brocktonians who are currently fighting this disease. It is my duty as your elected representative to ensure that the city is taking every possible action to protect our residents from this public health crisis. That is why I've worked with the mayor, our quality of life board, Brockton DPW, and our police department to formulate and execute a plan to clear out and clean up the homeless encampment under our downtown bridges. This encampment was a public health concern and an eyesore in the heart of our city. And I will continue to work with the mayor and all city officials to ensure this, that this encampment does not happen again. Additionally, city councilors, Tina Cardoso, Rita Mendez, and myself, along with councilors Wynn Farwell, and Susan DeCastro have, two, have filed two separate resolves requesting that the mayor, that the director of BEMA, and that the public health officer all come before the finance committee on May 4th to discuss the city's efforts in combating the COVID-19 pandemic. It is my intent to listen to our city officials on what measures they have taken to protect our citizens from COVID-19. It is also my goal to see if the city can provide more information to our residents 
so that you can have a better understanding of the data collected so that you may be able to protect yourselves and your families during this pandemic. I believe the more information, the better. So I look forward to that discussion. Although our country and our city has been hard hit by this deadly disease, it is important to know that there are heroes among us. Our brave healthcare workers throughout our city and our first responders. These dedicated men and women are on the front lines of this pandemic and they deserve our appreciation and our praise. Today, I wanted to highlight the efforts of a few residents of Brockton who are doing their part to fight this COVID-19 pandemic. My first guests are two Brockton Public School food service workers, Jen Paletti and Kim Gomes. These two women are serving our community and our children at the East Middle School Lunch Grab and Go. Their dedication and efforts are ensuring that our children are still receiving the proper nutrition during this pandemic, and we are all in their debt. Um, so welcome to the program, ladies. Thank you. So, um, you know, before, before we get into it, you know, I, I'd like to uh, get some background. Um, so let's start with uh, you, Kim. Uh, Kim, you're, I understand you're a Brockton resident, correct? Yes, I am, yes. And on what side of town do you live on? North, the north side of Brockton. And you're currently a uh, food service worker for what school? I work for the Champion Charter School. And how long have you been working for Champion Charter? I've been there two years, but I've been in this uh, food service for 20. Uh, all here in the Brockton area or? In Brockton, yes. Oh, great. So what, what other schools have you worked for? Uh, North Middle School, West, and Brockton High School. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for that. Um, and uh, can you tell me some of your experiences as a, uh, as a food service worker at the Brockton Public Schools? Um, my experience uh, with working with the students is a lovely experience. Um, we, we bond a, a relationship with our students. They, they become like our own kids. So uh, we try to treat them accordingly. And so um, I enjoy working and, and serving the students. Well, we appreciate the service. And, uh, and Jen, um, tell me, you, you reside in Brockton as well, correct? I do. I'm on the west side. On the west side. Um, how long have you been a Brockton resident for? Um, just about seven years now. Okay. And uh, all, obviously, you're also a uh, food service worker. Yes. How long have you been doing that for? Um, I've been with Brockton Food Service for three years. And... Uh, what school do you currently work for? I am at West Middle currently. Um, um, I was in Nashville Middle School before that. Before that, okay. My, uh, my daughter was a student in Nashville. Um, oh, and some of your, maybe some of your experiences as a, a food service worker. Like Kim said, we do definitely have um, a relationship with each student, whether, you know, everyone's on a different level, but we definitely take pride in knowing our kids and what they enjoy and what they don't enjoy and we have to advocate for them obviously because they're not you know able to say hey we don't like this so we do like this so we're definitely ones that um are the middleman to the higher up people on what our kids like and you know they respect us more for that too for getting a relationship with them mm -hmm. um very few times are, are we disrespected where we see it happen you know out in the streets a lot more but our relationship with our kids is really something that um, is special to us and to them. You definitely grow a bond with the kids. Yeah, well, we do appreciate that. And uh, Jen, thank you for your service to our children. Um, so I can imagine both of you uh, miss the students, right? Yes. 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 Yep. And um, so, <clears throat> so currently, uh, you are uh, both uh, food service workers engaged in the East Middle School lunch grabbing goes. Correct. And um, 
So I, I think a lot of people are interested in uh, the, the uh, people who are working these lunch grab and goes and who are uh, serving our community by ensuring that our children are still receiving proper nutrition uh, during these uh, you know, unprecedented times. Mm -hmm. So um, my desire is to put a spotlight on women like yourself who are really stepping up and serving our children and our community is so proud of you. So uh, I wanna thank you for that. Thank you. Um, thank you. So let's talk about the lunch grab and goes. So what, what are the times that this lunch grab and go is open? Um, so we are open for um, drive throughs from 11.30 to one Monday through Friday. Um, even on holidays, we've been here. So it's pretty, um, making sure these kids get fed, you know, seven days a week. On Fridays, we do give out the three lunches, three breakfast um, to make sure they're good for the weekend as well. Right, so tell me about what, what so it's, uh, the, the drive through starts at 11. 11.30. What time are you ladies showing up to uh, begin work? Um, we're here at 10 o'clock to bag, um, you know, our site here. It comes off the truck from the high school. That's everything gets prepared at the high school. So we have a driver that brings it here. We separate it, we bag it, um, you know, we cart it up. And when people come by, we give them what they need. So let's, let's talk about the, um, the food itself. Can you give me what, what would normally be in one of the bags that you hand out? Um, so our breakfast consists of a juice, a piece of fruit, um, usually like a string cheese or a cere in a cereal or animal crackers in a cereal bar. Um, and then our lunch is, you know, we can have pizza in a vegetable or chicken in a vegetable. Um, they definitely go by, you know, the vegetables and the fruit guidelines and then we stick fruit in there as well and milk. milk. Yep. They get two milks a day. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, just a, a question about um, the, the, the process. So uh, after you put together, you know, one o'clock, the, the uh, drive-through opens up. Um, so tell me, tell me how that goes. A car enters East Middle School and what happens then? So we'll take, we take account of um, the people who are coming through. And um, so one will take account and one will, pass out the uh, the food and um, starts at 11.30. Okay. The, the person, t we take it, we put it on the table, the person drives up, rolls down the window, takes it off the table, can drive away. Right. So there's no right. contact with anybody. Right. Okay. So they're grabbing the meals themselves uh, from a table mm -hmm. um, and there's no contact. Right. So, um, now the, the school year has been canceled pretty much. So uh, we would expect this program uh, to go on for how long? When, when would the last day of this program be? Yes. Until at least June 24th. That's okay. the last day of school. So if, if, we, if it's gonna go throughout the summer, we're not aware of that yet. But so right now we're here until June 24th. Okay. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's, it's funny that this is uh, springtime, but our weather really has not um, been very spring-like. No. So you girls are working in some elements out there, rain, we even had snow one day. Tell me about that. Well, they provide uh, rain gear for us, which is nice. They make sure that we are warm. They make sure we have uh, hot water, so if we want tea or hot cocoa, we're, we're warm. So they're making sure that um, our bosses are making sure we're comfortable. Yeah. We usually just rotate out. We'll That's do two at a time. Rotation. Just rotate to get warm. And um, It's definitely, it seems on Fridays, we've had rain every single Friday since yeah. we started this program. Mm -hmm. <sighs> uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the weather has not been uh, very cooperative. But I think that just kind of goes to uh, to show the, the level of dedication and um, love that you have for these children, that you know that you're standing out in the rain for two three hours a day um, to make sure our children are fed. So um, I can't tell you how much we appreciate that. Me as a father to uh, two school age children, 
um, that that there are people like you, uh, Brocktonians, um, that that are serving the East Side. And again, it is so appreciated. Maybe you can talk uh, just quickly about the camaraderie that is built uh, during these times between you and your uh, fellow food service workers. <laughs> you mean the bond we're building and uh, working together? Yeah. Oh, it, it's it's nice. We uh, um, it, it's a nice bond when you when you work with someone um, in in this time and situation. It's it's nice to. Uh, come to work and have respect and appreciation for each other. So uh, we all get along great and it's nice. Yes. It, it either nice. makes your day or breaks your day. That's so. true. We're that lucky true. we have a good crowd of good, good group of girls here. So mm -hmm. we're, we're off track. You do. There, there's no doubt about that. And uh, maybe you can just, uh, again, briefly uh, speak about the reception uh, that you are receiving from these families that you're uh, providing uh, this nutritional assistance to. We've had great reception. Um, last week, a woman wanted to take pictures of, of us that were outside, and she thanked us so much for uh, what we were doing. And um, other people come by and just say, uh, what a great job um, we're doing. And, and we appreciate that, and it's, it's very nice. Even kids' faces that we see every day now. Yeah. You, know, you know, we had no idea who these kids were, and now we're seeing them every day. And they have a big smile on their face, and they're happy to see us. So yeah. obviously, that makes us happy that you know, just see the kids happy. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I've You're seen some of my students can... though, and, and it, and it makes nice. me happy when I see a student come through, so it's nice. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. Um, you're putting a smile on the children's face, and you're definitely putting a smile on the face of the residents of Brockton. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just want to open this up for a, a, a last statement. Uh, maybe, uh, Jen, we can begin with you, if uh, <laughs> you have a, a, a last statement that you would like the uh, people of Brockton to know. Yeah, I'll say, you know, you've been here a couple of times helping us and seeing what it's like firsthand. Um, I'd say people really that. are respectful and appreciative. We haven't had really any negative feedback. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with you coming here a few days, you were passing out cards and talking to everybody. Everybody's really friendly and happy despite the circumstances that are going on in the world. So I think it, it definitely helps, keeps everybody, you know, grounded. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see a city council take interest in, in what's going on in the community. Well, I, I do appreciate that. Um, you know, as you said, Jen, I've, I've uh, taken the opportunity uh, to make sure that I appear at these uh, lunch grab and goes and uh, really trying to check the temperature of our citizens. And I have to, I have to report, they're doing amazing. Our families and our children, they're very um, resilient. Um, they have smiles on their faces. You know, I've, re I, I've talked to uh, many of the family members and I asked them, how are you holding up? And, and, you know, are you guys okay? And it's been consistent. We're doing fine. We're hanging in there. We're making the best out of a, uh, of a tough situation. Thank you for having our backs. Uh, thank you for providing food for our children. So um, I am I am overwhelmed with the level of dedication and and support and love that women like you have for our city and for our children. And I just want to make sure that the residents of Brockton see and hear from you. And um, you know, and 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 really uh, thank you. Thank you so much for what you do. You. And uh, I hope to see you both again soon at another lunch grab and go. And, um, you know, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, on behalf of the city council, uh, the mayor's office, the superintendent, and the residents of the east side. Uh, thank you, ladies, and God bless you both. Thank, thank you. you too. Have, Have a great a nice day. day. Talk soon. Bye. And our next guest is Kathy Sacchetti a longtime Ward 5 resident and EMT who saw firsthand the dangerousness of COVID-19. And she noticed a deficiency in the available PPE. So she developed a device to help protect her fellow first responders. Um, so uh, I wanna welcome to the program, uh, Kathy Sacchetti, who is a uh, longtime Eastside resident 
It also is uh, EMT. So Kathy, welcome. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Glad to be here. We appreciate it. So uh, Kathy, um, tell me, you, you uh, East Side resident, uh, you live there with your husband. Uh, you raised uh, four girls uh, on the East Side. Um, tell me, what was it like uh, raising your family on the East Side? Uh, we, it, this is a beautiful neighborhood, you know. Um, I, I would not have wanted to be anywhere else raising my kids, you know, the, the girls. And we have two boys as well. Um, this, this area, this city has been very good to us. Yeah, it is a, a great neighborhood. Um, tell me, do you notice a lot of differences uh, in the neighborhood uh, from, you know, when, when the children were young up until now, uh, them being all adults? Uh, well, I, I noticed that a lot of the children that grew up with our kids are now living in the neighborhood because they've all bought homes here too. So, you know, it's a multi-generational neighborhood. Everybody stays close together and um, everyone knows each other and watches out for each other. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a nice place to live. Yeah, and I, I happen to be one of those who uh, grew up in the neighborhood uh, and then decided to come back to the neighborhood and, uh, yeah. and, and buy a house there myself. So you're absolutely right. right. It's, uh, East Side is a, a great neighborhood, a great community. Um, and, you know, we've, there's been a lot of turnover in the last few years, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, it's, it's great that we, it's a type of neighborhood that you get out, you meet your neighbor and you become lifelong friends. That's so, right. Um, you know, it, it is a good neighborhood and, uh, mm -hmm. we appreciate that. So, um, <clears throat> as I mentioned before, Kathy, you are a, uh, employed as a EMT and, uh, you were, uh, basically at the forefront of this corona epidemic uh, when it started. Can you tell me, um, what, what did you see as an EMT? Uh, well, I, you know, I, I have been on leave for several weeks um, after designing this cover that I'm working on. Uh, but initially, it was just the escalation of um, the illnesses that we were seeing, the numbers, the fear in, in people as it grew exponentially to uh, the reports coming from overseas and then, you know, moving into the United States. And um, it, it really is just heartbreaking how, how many people have been affected by this whole situation, both medically, physically, and economically. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's definitely a uh, crisis that is affecting us in uh, many areas. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, uh, I'm imagining when you were first uh, dealing with the corona uh, crisis uh, as an EMT, uh, the, the idea of protecting yourself from catching the, the the flu or the virus was at the forefront of your mind. Um, Absolutely. So tell, me about, tell me about that. The, uh, the 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 how first responders protect themselves uh, from the coronavirus. Well, if you have a patient that you're going in for that is a suspected COVID patient, um, you have to completely cover with personal protective equipment. The head the headgear, the goggles, the face masks, as well as the gowns and the gloves. And that's continuously being turned over, you know, taken off, put back on, taken off, put back on every time there's a contact with a patient. So one of the problems that we were all starting to experience was that there was a limited number especially the masks. Um, equipment overall, the protective equipment overall, but especially the N95 masks, which are the medical grade filtration masks that have to be worn when you're interacting with patients who have something mm -hmm. contagious. 
Right. Now, you would think that um, out of all of the uh, personal protective equipment, that the mask would be the most vital since the, uh, the, the this mask, virus yeah, entered the mask the and the goggles. Yeah. yeah. The, the mouth, the nose, right. the eyes. So, um, you know, that, that's the main entry point for this virus. So the right. fact that we were uh, limited in our mm -hmm. protective gear, uh, yeah. especially masks, it was quite uh, frightful at the beginning it, of the process. It's, it's very frightening. It's frightening for everybody right now who's experiencing this, who has to reuse their masks every day over and over and over again. It's, it's, a, it's an issue of concern for everyone involved in the medical fields. But it's, it's also highly risky for people to have to keep these masks on, interacting from one patient to another, to another, to another. So um, that's- Is there a limit, you're saying there's a limit to its effectiveness if, uh, if, it's, it's, if it's continuously warmer? It's not so much that there's a limit to its effectiveness. It's that contaminants are gonna get on the outside of that mask and you're now having to, wear this for an entire shift. Some people I've heard from have had to wear their masks for an entire week. So anything that comes in contact with the outside of that mask is going to contaminate. It is a filtered mask, but it's going to contaminate the outside of that mask. So which was a, a, a great concern of mine when I came home from my last shift, just one of the things I was very conscious of, as well as, you know, not bringing my uniform or anything into the house, having to change before I came in so I didn't carry anything, you know, any contaminants in with me. And um, just, you know, Jeff, just seeing how overwhelming this whole situation was for my partners, for coworkers, for the hospital staff we were interacting with, uh, let alone the patients and their family members. Um, it's an incredibly emotional situation for everybody to have to try and work through. The and stress so levels are extremely high for everybody. The fear is extremely high for everybody. And, and so, so, so with with that understanding, your you know the stress level, um, you know the, the the concerns regarding contamination. I'm sure, as you're saying, that weighed heavily on your mind. So it got your brain kind of twirling about how you can help. So why don't you tell yeah. us a little bit about that? Well, when I came home from my last shift, I was, as I said very concerned, almost to the point of being overwhelmed with what we were seeing happening and what we knew was yet to come. And I just happened to go into my closet to get dressed and found some material that I had ordered four or five months prior for a project, another project I had in mind. And in thinking about the whole process of the personal protective equipment and um, how, to, how to circumvent that contaminant that is gonna be on the outside of all the personal protective equipment, I started to think about this material and a design started to kind of formulate in my brain. And, and, what, and what was the result? So what was the result of that, um, those thoughts and your design? If you could tell us about that. Uh, well, I ended up putting together a pattern and designing a cover for that goes over the N95 mask, can be worn and sanitized after every patient contact. It can go right through the wash and the dryer at the end of your shift, just like your uniform, however you clean it. Um, it's reusable, it's beautiful, it doesn't interfere with the seal on the N95, and you know, um, it's comfortable, it's breathable. We've now, had a lot of 
a lot of positive responses from medical staff using them now. Um, Did you, go ahead. I apologize. Do, do you happen to have one that you can show us? Um, I'm not sure I have one that's put together right now, Jeff. I'm going to have to call you back. <laughs> we're, we're in pieces here. See? Hold on. I'll show you. Give, give us a little shot of your operation there. All right. So this is, this is how we are set up. These are the different pieces that we're actually putting together. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah. So it ends up being a cover that goes over the N95. Sorry, this one's not quite done. But no. um, yeah, we have, yeah, we have pieces everywhere. I don't know if you can see any of that. We've got buckets nope. with different pieces that we are, different colors, different pieces that we're putting together now. And, uh, you know, we have a whole crew of people that have been pitching in. Uh, my girls, the grandkids, a couple of friends, um, wow. everyone who has heard about this has jumped right in to help us um, get orders made and out. We're hand sewing everything, but we've got hundreds of orders that have come in from all over the country. So it's it's really it's been very time consuming and you know, we're doing our best to get every single order out to the people who need it. Wow, that's that's amazing, Kathy. You got quite the operation going on there. Um, so tell me about the response from the people that you have shipped the uh, masks to. Um, what, are, what are they saying they about love it? them? They absolutely love them. They are so grateful for the extra protection, both for them and for the masks that they have to keep reusing. Um, a side benefit of this material specifically um, that we didn't even realize until after we had the masks made and we're sending them out to people was that, uh, that people using them were reporting back to us that this actually helps to wick moisture away from their N95 so they don't get so overheated the way they do wearing the surgical masks over them. So that's been an added benefit to uh, this product as well. Wow. Now tell me, you said you're shipping them all over the country. You want to, wh where are you shipping to? Uh, we've shipped to California, Georgia, Florida, Texas, New York. A lot, a lot have gone to New York. Um, North Carolina, uh, probably most states at this point. Do you have any idea of how many you've made? Um, I'm guessing that we're, we're working on about 175 to 200 now, uh, but still have orders for um, over 600. Wow. Now, and this is, this is all, uh, what about payment? Like, are, are people buying them? Are you doing all this? Like, uh, how, uh, how, how are you supporting we're not, them? We're not charging for it. We do have an account set up. Um, for anyone that wants to donate to help us with the cost of restocking materials so that we can, you know, keep this going. But, um, you know, we are looking to expand and, and grow a business from this that will provide way more quantities out to the people that need it. We are in talks with a couple of manufacturers uh, trying to get some help there so that we can get out, out thousands rather than tens and twenties. But while we're trying to accomplish that, we're here, multiple people, multiple <laughs> machines, sewing pretty much day and night. Wow. Now, Kathy, if uh, anybody wanted to uh, find out more information about, and you're calling this the COVID covers. Right. If anybody wanted to find out any more information about uh, this 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 cover, um, how would they do that? Uh, they can go to covidcovers.org. It's uh, actually it's covidcoversks.org. And I also understand you have a Facebook page, COVID yes. Covers as well. Yes. 
Yeah. Wow. Kathy, yeah. I'm going to say it's amazing. Now, I, I've known you for, for a few decades now, and you've always been somebody who's extremely concerned about the well-being of other people. Um, and, and, you know, the ingenuity and the, the commitment and the, the resourcefulness is, is really, you know, amazing. And so, you know, I just, uh, I, I want to thank you. And, and, you know, I want to wish you the best in your endeavors here. And if, um, you know, if there's ever anything you need from me, you know, um, I'm always there for you. Thank and, you. I appreciate that. And, and I was wanting, you know, uh, wrapping this up, if there was anything you wanted to say uh, to the residents of uh, the East Side regarding the, the, the seriousness uh, of the COVID epidemic right now, um, you know, and, and what they should know coming from a, a, a healthcare professional. Uh, take it serious. This, this is nothing to fool around with. Um, stay at home if you can. Don't go out. Don't, don't socialize with anybody right now. This, this is a very serious virus, and it's not worth losing your life over. Well, I, I agree, Kathy. I want to uh, thank you for your time. And, um, you know, I, I wish you all the best in this endeavor. And uh, ha have a great day. Thank you. You All too, right. Jeff. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you to Jen, Kim, and Kathy for appearing on today's show. And also, thank you for your time and your service to our city. There's one last issue I'd like to raise today, and that is the 2020 census. I cannot stress enough how important it is that every resident of Brockton is fairly and accurately counted on the census. Approximately $675 billion is apportioned by the federal government based upon population totals and further breakdowns of age, sex, and race. It is vitally important that Brockton receives its fair share of these funds to support our schools, our hospitals, our roads, and other important public work projects. As of May 9, 2020, Brockton has a census response rate of 50%. And this is compared to a 60.6% .6 rate of response in all of Massachusetts. Brockton, we must do better. So please, if you have yet to complete your census survey, please do it today. I want to thank you all for watching today. God bless and stay safe.